Hello, now we look at game 7 of the 1992 candidates match between Anatoly Karpov and Nigel Short. In game 6, uh, Short uh, defeated Karpov uh, with the white pieces uh, in the Rui Lopez and used the um, you know, offbeat line to do it, the uh, Howell uh, variation, and continued uh, with keeping Anatoly uh, totally off balance. Now, Karpov, uh, now being behind in the match, uh, needed... Um, the win to tie things up and to just basically try to turn the tide. So now Karpov has the white pieces against Nigel Short. Now, Nigel Short had been playing the Queen's Gambit accepted, but here decides to uh, switch it up and plays the Queen's Gambit declined. Um, and this is going to turn into a Tardakawa uh, variation to B6. So bishop takes f6 happens, bishop takes f6, and then basically fixing the pawns. This is an old method where by once black commits his bishop here, then white shuts down the diagonal. And usually white uh, winds up fighting against black's hanging pawns. So it becomes uh, one of those positions where it's uh, black is playing dynamically. Notice he has a two, the pair of bishops, and he has a hanging pawn. So black is trying to play for more open, free type position in the spirit of a, a terrorist. However, taking on some structural weakness, and white is trying to play um, more position, uh, positionally uh, based. B4, C5, B takes C5, B takes C5, Rook B1, Queen A5. And queen d2, c takes d4, knight takes d4, isolated pawn appears on board, bishop takes d4, and now queen takes d4 is possible, but then um, black can lose some time, or excuse me, white will lose some time after uh, knight c6, although it's not the end of the world. So for example, knight c6 and queen d2. And then now if black won it, black can just simply get rid of his isolated pawn since the uh, the queen is in the uh still in, the queen and king are still in the middle of the board. So for example, e takes here. Bishop a6. It's possible. Sorry, not <laughs> Bishop A6. And then, for example, if white tried to skate away, castle, and then bishop takes E2. And can't really recapture. So to avoid troubles, Karpov simply took Back with the pawn, and now we have this symmetrical position on the board. And, of course, this is a pretty pretty dry position, but this is uh, the type of position that Karpov likes. And if, you have been, if you've been following the series, you'll, uh, you have, would have heard me speaking about the battle of ideas uh, in this match and, um, the, you know, the imposition of the will of each player. Short had basically up to this game been imposing his will on the whole match uh, getting positions that he favors and positions that Karpov was not uh, uh, too familiar with you know at least that uh, you know at this time okay so this right here this position is the type of position that Karpov likes the position is very symmetrical very limited uh, tactical um, uh, chances right for black and uh, basically Karpov can rely on his positional um, intuition and his great experience and just try to outplay Nigel in a quiet and equal position so let's let's go on so Bishop a6 was played Karpov simply played Knight b5 Queen d8 castle so here Nigel has a uh, you know, pretty sterile equality as black. So he's equalized, but there's not really a lot to do in the position. Both sides have kind of the same weakness, uh, one on d4, the other on d5. 
So the position is going to be very symmetrical and it's going to matter, you know, come down to who has the initiative, who winds up with the initiative. Bishop F1. Um, now, Bishop F3 is more aggressive. It's attacking the E pawn. Uh, excuse me, the D pawn. Why not? Karpov played Bishop F1. Rook AB8. A4. Rook FC8. Rook B3. Bishop takes B5. A takes B5. So there's a little uh, small victory there by Karpov as now he has the bishop uh, versus the knight in this um, position. Queen A2. So here's Karpov grabbing hold of the initiative. Now he's making threats that black has to respond to. Putting the queen on A2. Attacking the pawn directly and also x-raying this pawn and the initiative is important in uh, symmetrical positions because even though white has like the similar weaknesses is if you can uh, jump on if, if white can jump on black first and force him to defend then this makes uh, white's game uh, better because black doesn't have time to attack he could just keep putting pressure on black so rook c7 Rook a3, see there it is again now, another attack on the a7 pawn, attack on the d5 pawn. Queen f5, forcing defense from Nigel. Rook e3, threatening to uh, play rook e8. Knight e6, and now rook a5. So you can see how Nigel is just solely kind of, you know, being bounced around by Karpov. You know, in this um, quiet looking position. So now the d5 pawn is uh, threatened. Queen g4. And threatening the rook on d1. Bishop e2. Queen g6. Karpov plays g3. This keeps the, um, the, well, it doesn't keep the knight out because the knight can come there anyway. Probably should have should have uh, done that. G three is played, so instead of G three, maybe just uh, Bishop F three instead, and trade the B pawn for the D pawn. So G three, Rook B, uh, Rook B C eight. And of course, G3 has more purpose than just keeping the knight off here. But later on, um, white will have some a safe area for his king and avoid any kind of back rank um, nonsense. Bishop, H, uh, Bishop H5. And this move right here, Rook BCA, although very natural, is probably a mistake. Because after that, again, Karpov is able to continue on. Bishop H5. With the initiative. And now he drops the pawn. G6. Bishop E2. Rook C3. H4. Rook A3 from Karpov. Queen E4. Just centralizing the pieces. And preparing for the move D5. To advance the pawn. King G2. King g7, d5, dislodging the knight. Knight goes to c4. Queen d4. Now this ties up the, the uh, black queen on f6. Rook c2. Rook e8. This, uh, this allows Karpov to trade off queens into this advantageous endgame anytime he likes. Rook a, a2. Rook g8. And this, this move, of course... Uh, rook a a2 causes um, Nigel to lose his queen. Um, he had to play queen takes d4 if he wanted the material to uh, stay level. But he was still be in uh, great danger at this point. Because of this, this passer right here. However, he played rook a a2, and then after this simple tactic, rook g8, the king must go away. King g8, and now queen takes f6. Rook takes a e2, 
and it's resignable of course at this point Karpov goes into a uh, trade mode Rook a1 94 simply just takes Rook takes a2 Rook takes a2 Queen d4 preparing to push the pawn as well as attacking the knight he doesn't care about that f2 pawn King g1 Rook e2 d6 and uh Nigel Short just resigned, so um, not a brilliant game by Karpov, but a bad game uh, by Nigel. But simple chess by Karpov. I mean, he played exactly, got the position that he wanted. Nice, still, dry, technical position where he could uh, basically rock his opponent to sleep. And uh, that's what happened in Game 7. There's no way Nigel should have really uh, lost that, but... Um, you know, he just didn't get a position that he was comfortable in. And that, that happens when you're in positions that you're either unfamiliar with or not comfortable in. So that's it for this video. And I'll see you on.